So chapter eight, price elasticity of demand. I talk about price elasticity of demand is the degree of responsiveness between the quantity demanded of a product as a result of a change in price. That means price has changed. Mm -hmm. Because the price has changed, the quantity demanded must change. That is price elasticity. Okay. So we have the case study immediately for electricity. That was it for those who want to read it. I read it already. So I'm just going to go to the question immediately. And we have the Chinese takeaway too. So those are the two case studies. So the first question, what happened to the petal demand for electricity after the 13% price increase? After the 13% price increases for electricity, Mr. Potter asked his family to try and reduce their electricity consumption because the price has increased. So it, uh, Mr. Petal told his family to reduce the consumption of electricity. Mm -hmm. Well, at the end of it all, the bill, when the bill, the new bill for electricity for the next, for the previous month comes, there's no change. So there's just slight difference in the bill. So that means the demand for electricity is inelastic. It is compulsory. Did you get it? Yes. Question two, describe one possible reason for your answer to one. So the reason is that it is difficult to cut demand for electricity because we need electricity in our daily lives. It's a basic need. Did you get yes. it? Okay. Question three, do you think demand for Chinese takeaway food is sensitive to price changes? Yes, because based on the case study, 20% discount encouraged by Bob and R to switch suppliers. Based on the case study, they said it was often a 20% discount on takeaway orders. Bob said it was an attractive offer and suggested that they tried the new supplier that coming weekend. So the Chinese restaurants reduced their prices by 20%. So that makes them to go, that makes Bob and Ann to try the new restaurant for the weekend. So that means it is responsive to change in price. You get it. So we go to price. We go to the price elasticity itself. I explained what price elasticity is. The degree of responsiveness between the quantity demanded of a product as a result of the change in price. So price is changed. Price has changed. Then it has made the quantity demanded to change. That is what we call price elasticity of demand. I think it's clear. Yes. So we go down. So price inelastic demand. Why do we call it inelastic? We call it inelastic because a change in price does not significantly change the quantity demanded. So there's a change in price, but the quantity demanded does not change so much. That is price inelastic. Then we have price elastic demand, which means a change in price brings about a significant change in the quantity demanded. So a change in price, maybe an increase in price brings about an increase in the quantity demanded so much, or a fall in price brings about an increase in the quantity demanded. That is price elastic. Clear? Then we'll go to calculating PED. To calculate PED. So before we go there, I think, yes, uh, we have a case study again. But I did the case study together with the other one. So let me just read the case study for activity one. It said, here we have the case study for goods. It said, if the price increases from $5 to $6, from 5 to 6 look at this here. From 5 is the first graph to 6 Yes. So the quantity demanded has increased from what? 2,000 to 3,000. As fell from 3,000 to 3,000. It fell because when the price increases from five to six, the quantity, when the price was five, the quantity demanded was 3,000. But now the price has increased to six, the quantity demanded has reduced to 2,000. Is it clear? Yes. So question two, what is meant by elastic demand? Demand, when the, it is elastic demand, if the demand for goods reduces as a result of a change in price. And based on this, there's a, there's a reduction of like 50%. Because the price has increased by 20%, and the quantity demanded fell by 50%. When you calculate it, it is um the price fell for increase from five to six, right? Q2 minus Q1, Q2 was six minus five divided by five times on times hundred. That's 50%. The price has increased. Uh, the point uh, the quantity sold. As falling. Let me do it again so I can see. The price is was five and now it is yes. six. So that's six minus five. That is one. So that means one minus one divided by the price before, which was five, which is one point five. One over five times hundred. That's twenty percent. So the price has increased by twenty percent. So as an increase in price of 20% brings about 
the quantity demand that we calculate 3000 the, the original price was 3000 right yes minus 2000 divided by 3000 times 100 well, let me just take the Q2 minus Q1. 3,000 was it? Okay, no, 2,000 minus 3,000. That's 1,000 divided by 3,000. That's 1 over 3 multiplied by 100. So that's 50%. So the quantity demanded has fell by 50%. Mm -hmm. So that brings about that means it is price elastic because if a, uh, a fall in price, uh, an increase in price from five to six has been about a fall in quantity demanded from 3,000 to 2,000. Is it clear? Yes. So we'll go to calculating price elasticity of demand. So to calculate price elasticity of demand, the calculation is percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. Right. So that means Q2 minus Q1, that's Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 over P1. That is the formula. So that's the formula anyway. Then we have the value interpreting the PED. So interpret the PED. This is where I have now. Interpreting the PED. If the PED is greater than one, it is elastic. Like the case study of the one we did now. And if it is less than one, it is inelastic. If it is zero, it is perfectly inelastic. If it is to infinity, like five, seven, eight, it is perfectly elastic. And if it is minus one, it is unitary. Clear? Yes. Then we have PED and the slope of the demand curve. So look at the graph here. Here. Yes. So the graph is showing that if it is that way, it is fixed here, it is perfectly inelastic. That means it doesn't change. If it is this way, it is perfectly elastic. It changes as a result of the quantity change in demand. The second one. That means it can change. Well, here it is fixed. It cannot change. Clear. So we'll go down. Yes, our story. Let me go to our twenty-two. We have the case study. They said calculate the PED for Epson Tennis Club next uh, membership. PED is percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. So here we have, they said after the emergency committee meeting in January 2016, it was slash to slash membership from 500 per annum to 300. So there's a change there from 500 to 300. So that means before now it is Q1 is, no, the price, sorry. P1 is 500, P2 is 300, okay? Then Q1, now it grew from 400, Q2 is 600. You get, so we say Q2 minus Q1. So that means Q2 minus Q1, Q2 minus Q1, 600 minus, minus 400 divided by Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1, 400. But 600 minus 400, that's 600 minus 400 is 200, right? 200 divided by my 400. That's 0 0.5 percent. 0 0.5, which is multiplied by 100. That's 50 percent. 50 percent. Then P2 minus P1. P2, which is 300, right? Minus P1. 500 equals to minus 200 divided by P1. 500. That's minus 2.5, which is 0 0.4. Multiply by 100, that's 40%. So this is 50 divided by 40, negative here. Yes. That's minus 125. Is it clear? Yes. So the PED, now the question, the second question says, what evidence is there to suggest that the demand is elastic in this example? Demand is elastic if it is greater than one. So it is greater than one. In PED, it doesn't matter if it is negative or positive. Yes. Clear? Yes. So we go to factors affecting the PED. One of the factors that affect PED is availability of substitute. So goods that have a lot of substitute will be price elastic. If there are a lot of substitute, 
the demand for those products will be price elastic because if the price increases, you can switch to buying from other competitors which the price are less. Mm -hmm. So demand for products that are about that are that have substitutes are price elastic. Degree of necessity. If the product is important, like electricity, like food, like clothing, the demand is always price inelastic. Clear. Proportion of the income spent. If the amount of what you have to spend on that product is just little from your money, from your income, the demand for that product will be price inelastic. Like maybe you are you are earning one thousand dollars and you need to buy a pen. The pen is usually for one dollar, but now it is two dollars. Will you buy it or not? Will you think about it? No, you have. You understand. So, if the proportion of what you spend in terms of your income, if it is less than what you earn, the demand for that product will be price inelastic. But if the proportion of your income, like motor car, the price will be what elastic, because if the price increases, you won't be able to buy because it's going to take large proportion of your income. Yes. Is it clear? Yes. And time. The last one is about time. When you talk about time, the time between you can, the time in between you can, the, the time in between you have to switch from one product to another will determine if it is price elastic or inelastic. Maybe there's a new product in town now, and the price is five dollars, and they have increased it to seven dollars. Increasing it to seven dollars, and you cannot find another one in a short period of time. So the demand for that product will be price inelastic. But if it takes you a few period of time. To find a new product, then the price the, the price elasticity of demand will be price elastic mm -hmm. because the time to find a new one is not far. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Now go to the relationship between PED and total revenue. For total revenue, we are talking about price multiplied by quantity. So if the price elasticity of demand for a product is inelastic, if you increase the price, the total revenue will also increase. If the price elasticity of a product is elastic, and you increase the price, the total revenue will fall. Right. Okay, I'm explaining. If the price of a product is inelastic, that means whatever the price is, they will buy. Yes. So when you increase the kind of that, when you increase the price of such product, the re your total revenue, which is price multiplied by quantity sold, will increase. Yes. But if the demand for your product is price elastic, it means if the price increases, consumers will stop to buy. When you, whenever you increase the price for such products, the total revenue will fall because less people will buy. Is it clear? Now go to the case study. Now the MCQ. What is the PED of a perfectly inelastic demand curve? It is B, which is zero. Perfectly inelastic, clear? Yes. And if the value of PED for a product is 0 0.8, an increase in price will result in which of the following? If it is 0 0.8, it is not, it is greater, it is less than one. That means it is inelastic. So what will happen if it is inelastic? Decrease. No, revenue will increase. I just told you now that okay. if the demand for the product is inelastic, when you increase the price, the total revenue will rise. So it is C. Clear. The market for chocolates. In China, they have these issues. Okay. And there's a case study which we just looked at. Now, the question the first question says describe what PED is. Price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of demand to a change in price. It measures the responsiveness, your reaction, as a result of a change in price to the quantity demanded. That is price yes. elasticity of demand. Clear. Yes. Question two: Calculate the PED of chocolates and state whether the NG, the chocolate is elastic or inelastic. So PED is percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. So PED is Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 over P1. So we we'll go to the P1. The P1 here is. Uh, is down here. The P1, look at the last paragraph here. They said charges retailer 20. 20 was P1. And now it has reduced the price to 16, which is P2. So P1 is 20, P2 is 16. Clear? Yes. Then the quantity demanded was 12,000. Now it is 16,000. So Q1 is 12,000. Q2 is 16,000. So go to the formula, which is PED is Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 over P1. Q2 is 16,000 minus Q1, 12,000, divided by Q1, which is 16,000 minus 12,000, which is 4,000, divided by 12,000, divided by 16 minus 20, which is minus 4. And this is, okay, yeah, minus 4 over 16. 
which is Q P1. So 4,000 over 12,000 multiplied by, we reciprocate now, 16 comes up, minus four comes down. So that's 4,000 multiplied by 16,000, which is 64,000, divided by 12,000 multiplied by minus 4,000, which is 48,000. So 64,000 divided by 48,000 is minus four over three. So minus four over three is the same as minus 1.33. So it is elastic because it is greater than one. Is it clear? Question three, they said, calculate the total revenue if the lower price is 16. So total revenue, so we have to compare now. The total revenue is P1, Q1 for the first price, which is the price was 20 and the quantity was 12,000. That's at the first place. That's Q, P1 is 20, Q1 is 12. So the total revenue for that is 20 multiplied by 12,000, which is 240,000. So the first total revenue, total revenue is 240,000. Then the increase in price or uh, the change in price is P2 and Q2, right? P2 is now 16. The price fell from 20 to 16. And the quantity demanded increases from 12,000 to 16,000. So P2 is 16. Q2 is 16. Uh, Q2 is 16. P2, P2 is 16. Q2 is 16,000. So 16 times 16,000 is 250,000. So the change in revenue is 256,000, which is TR, it will be TR2 minus TR1. So TR2 is 256,000 minus TR1, which is 240,000. So the change in revenue is 16,000. Is it clear? Yes. So that's about chapter eight. By the assist of demand. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't. Uh, we can't. Uh, okay.